kind of works about uh, almost 20 years ago. And um, not, not really coming from the biology part, but from the optics and photonics part. So 3D bioprinting, we heard it a lot today, is the idea to create complex 3D structures for, for human cells to repair or replace uh, portions or even whole tissues. And that is, that is basically the dream that you have something which is damaged and you can just uh, change that. So as we heard today, we are not quite yet there. So there are many, many approaches, many, many very interesting technologies. And I tried in the preparation to dive into that uh, issue again. So um, it starts with cells and matrices, in vitro cultivation and so on with, with many different things you can do with autologous or allergenic cells. So autologous seems to me as a non-biologist uh, much more likely because you, you actually can uh, um, can avoid uh, repulsion and, and inflammation reactions and so on. And um, there is a quite quite a huge wish list of what people would like to to see when they when they talk about this type of things. So what 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 the idea is you have a patient individualized artificial structures which can be used for implantation or re-implantation with uh, simplified procedures. So people are thinking in terms of blood vessels and muscle and skin and bladder, bone, cartilage, and so on and so on, and even teeth, what we heard today. So the autologous cell uh, uh, seems to be a very good start there. And uh, we were very much looking uh, with a biologist into the area of providing artificial ex extracellular matrices which should be biocompatible with a huge variety of interconnecting pores and variable size and variable mechanical properties to mimic the, 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 the tissues and to be very, very uh, good adherence for cells. So adhesion and formation, proliferation and differentiation of the living, living cells was, was one, one of our scopes. And also, uh, was it possible, would it be possible to have a physiologically degradable um, uh, uh, material which have controllable degradation rate and degradation products or non-degradable degradable materials which, which actually can be used in the, uh, um, in the tissue engineering part. So for the mechanical properties, so we heard all that already, uh, it's a variety of materials necessary actually in order to fulfill all these different, uh, these different uh, uh, things here. So why, why is my, my, ah, here, here it is. Um, you, you see my mouse here? Can you see my mouse? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes, ah, great, yes. Great, perfect. <laughs> So um, printing technologies, different printing technologies, different fabrication strategies. So for one, once it comes to the, to the 3D printing part, you actually would like to orchestrate whatever you're doing. You want to get rid of the layer by layer formation and would like to orchestrate your, your, your uh, functional uh, printing, printing head or whatever. And you would like to have many, many different de designs and combinations thereof. So starting with the extracellular matrices, um, that was done in cooperation with uh, Heike Wallis from University of Würzburg, now University of Halle, um, starting from, from pork small incestin uh, genjunum. Um, the dream was to, to create biological vascularized scaffolds, uh, which can be seeded with human cells. And there are many advantages in, in creating such a structure. Um, uh, uh, which you which you actually see you can can create functional tissues and you have structural features which resemble the natural role model biocompatible matrix and so on and so on but there are also many disadvantages like a very complex uh, um, a very complex um, uh, production you have potential potential pathogenic organisms and part of the part of the matrix are not not human so what we were looking for were uh, alternative alternative uh, methods uh, fabrication methods so what we what we did and what we started with was scaffold fabrication via 3d lithography which is part of the multi-photon uh, lithography and we started very early to expand this method from from the pure, let's say, optical and photonics applications into the biology and life science applications, which is very, very important 
um, to be to be combined to other methods, of course. And here are some examples. So starting with with uh, drug delivery structures, and and this is a little hair cage from Vladimir Mironov and Frederick Pereira, who designed that for hair reimplantation of of hair follicles, um, scaffold matrices, complete ear bones. Uh, that is an example from uh, from University of Stuttgart, which I actually very li like very much, as well as microfluidic cells. So there is a whole zoo of of what you can basically do, and the feature is was already explained in the in the printing conference. So we use laser light to to create these structures, and um, the reactions are just initiated in a very small focal volume, and it's now a challenge to expand this small focal volume to a to a very large uh, scale. So um, starting with the autologous approach with non-degradable scaffold, so you extract the cells and the cell seeding, and then you create your scaffolds and uh, put the scaffolds into a cultivation and tissue growth with uh, mechanical and, and other growth factors. And here are some examples from, from 2008 to 2011, where this already was world record in size. And um, the building rates were quite, quite low at that time, but indeed we could create any, any, any kind of, of different, different tissues, uh, different uh, scaffolds here, uh, which could be seeded with, uh, with living cells. And the idea is to, to re-implant that either by keeping the structure or by having a biodegradable material. So what we did then is when once you talk about different different mechanics, you need structures which have different mechanics from different materials. So we started with all these types of diorite, diamond, cube, and Schwarz uh, structures and created scaffolds from that to investigate whether this is possible. And that was done in the framework of a PhD thesis of Thomas Stichel. And this is a material which was created by Matthias Bayer and we investigated by, um, by uh, micro Raman spectroscopy whether this material can be cross-linked and whether we can speed up the process. So here is the scan rate of, of our laser beam. And you see for any of these uh, speeds, you, you can actually get uh, the same level of, of uh, um, uh, cross-linking initiated by the light. So this is a mesacrylate based system. You also can use a method, uh, an acrylate based system. You see the, the uh, level of cross-linking of conversion is higher and you also see that the, the average laser power you need for this material is much lower than for this material to create, to create a, uh, a solid structure. <clears throat> so we investigated how, how these structures influence the uh, adhesion and proliferation and differentiation of, of cells. So here you see different examples like longitudinal structures, square structures, circular structures. And what you see from the images here is that the longitudinal structures and the, the round shaped structures seem to be uh, liked by the cells, whereas the, the rectangular structures are, are not that populated. And on this side, you see an example of a degradable material, which was done in the framework of a PhD thesis of Kerstin Obel, uh, where we created the first degradable material, fully degradable material. And here you see a microvascular endothelial cells on this material where you see also see cell separation here. So that was quite, quite interesting. We started very frustrated with our degradation because all our cells always died in the beginning. And that was related to the production of alcohol and the cells, they just got drunk and, and died by, by the alcohol. And once we found that out, that was quite good. Then we, we, we looked into what kind of structures can we do? Can we do tubular structures? And you see that here. So you see a, a study on, on a parameter study on, on tubes, which you can then use with, uh, which you can then prepare with pores and with, uh, um, with uh, little little knobs in order to to provide uh, um, links to the cells, and here is the the the, the uh, reactor which was used by Heike Wallis in order to to put these materials into this reactor and then use the 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 cells to to uh, grow on the on these type of structures. Orthopedics applications is another 
is another uh, application we're looking into, and that was done in, in my former company, Multifoton Optics, together with many, many project partners. And one partner we work very closely with is uh, IBA, Institute uh, for Bioprocess Process and Analyse Technique. Um, so they are responsible for the design and the materials development. So what I came up with is like osteophase and chronophase uh, materials. And what we want, wanted to achieve is a uh, biophasic scaffold. And you have, you remember the studies I've shown on the, on the different, different uh, uh, structures you can create. So here is a scaffold made from, from a almost a material as a benchmark material. So the total structure is like 17, seven millimeters in diameter and about a centimeter in height. And with that, we we use the materials ACM and LCM3, which is polyamide, uh, epsilon caprolactone demethacrylate and polydl epsilon lactide crep, uh, capro, caprolactone for, for the other phase and uh, investigated also the uh, the mechanical properties of this material. And here you see a very, very nice example of a, of a biophasic uh, uh, scaffold. And remember the build rate I've shown you from 2014. Here the build rate is about a square centimeter in, uh, uh, sorry, a cubic centimeter in about 1.5 hours. So it's 100 times faster. And that was done with the new equipment we developed throughout this project. Um, we also looked into ceramics for scaffold fabrication. So this is a little bit challenging because these ceramics are slurries and they are not transparent. So the idea is to focus your beam into a transparent bath. But the good news is we even found parameters for the ceramics and process parameters and process windows to create uh, uh, ceramic polymer uh, uh, structures, which is shown here. And uh, after debending, you see the structure here. It's not a perfect, but it's it's obvious that we were able to to do that. And we're now looking into creation of ceramic scaffolds, of course. And here you see a an X-ray image of the ceramic face after debonding. So I hope I could show you some examples on the scaffold fabrication where we have full structure control, adaptable resolution, and uh, there are ongoing scaling activities uh, uh, for the uh, extracellular matrices. Um, the materials are biocompatible, non-degradable or degradable, hybrid polymer materials with different reaction kin kinetics, um, from the, from the material class of the Ormoser, of, of the Rena Ser, which is a new material class uh, invented about, let's say, 12, eight years ago. Cell growth uh, is ongoing. Um, I've showed you examples on physiologically degradable biphasic scaffolds for bone cartilage uh, applications, and uh, the mechanical properties uh, are, are mimicked by the, by the structure and by the materials. And uh, uh, first cell cultures and showed that they are compatible and biocompatible, as well as first examples of ceramic 3D structures as a first proof of concept. So this works, of course, was were not done by myself. So I part of the work was initiated by myself. So that was the uh, German Science Foundation project with PhD students you see here and the, the diploma student and people from, from Heike Wallis group as well and uh, also the uh, VMBF uh, funded project Poly Implant Talk, which is in a framework of Promat Leben Polymers initiative together with uh, all these partners here. Uh, that was the last project I initiated in my company as well as a project uh, funded by the uh, Turingia. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your um, attention. Thank you so much.